Hello everybody, welcome back to Aurelia. We have been doing some trams again last time, creating this transfer stop together with some plaza and buildings around it. It turned out looking great, as always. If you missed the last episode, make sure to watch it as well. Today, we will be doing highway interchanges. Not one, but two custom interchanges. The first one is going to be not far from here, right where I already placed that main avenue road, so an interchange was quite obvious here. It's going to be a bit more standard looking interchange, probably a mix between a clover leaf and a stack design. And the next one is going to be some distance from the first one on the other side of the crater. Again, where I already placed a road over the highway just like before. This one will be somewhat non-standard, more interesting in my opinion. So let's go. Okay, so we are going to start with uh, the first interchange. The first one that I showed in the opening cinematics right next to that uh, tram transfer stop that we have been doing last time, like I said. So I decided to go with uh, some fairly standard interchange, I guess. It's uh, going to be probably a clover stack interchange design, I suppose. It's going to have uh, two uh, loops, uh, obviously on the opposite sides like this, and uh, then some uh, just uh, connections just like you would have on a stack interchange, I guess, or somewhat similar to that. Now, as you can see, I was firstly uh, building this with uh, just uh, some kind of a helping road with uh, the gravel roads, I think, the elevated gravel roads, just to get the idea of how it needs to be, how the connections need to be, and obviously to better understand how uh, it needs to be built, you know, all the clearances and all that kind of stuff. So after I was done with that, I just copied it with move it and moved it uh, some, you know, someplace else to just uh, look at it as a, as a reference. And then it was just a, just a straightforward, just a straightforward build uh, with this with these interchanges. By the way, uh, at this exact point, uh, this was the uh, the point when I decided to do the uh, the movie tutorial for for last time for last week because uh, when I was doing these kinds of things, I noticed some of the some of the advanced stuff that you can do with move it. So that uh, I wanted to show that in that tutorial that I made last time. So just a you know behind the scenes a bit uh, information about there. But anyway, what are we doing here? So I just built those little loops. I was not really trying to be all that super precise. I was just copy pasting it from, uh, you know, the first side to the, to the opposite side of the highway and uh, pretty much doing the, the same things over and over again on the different, size, different sides of, uh, of the interchange. So I'm definitely going to be moving uh, quite quickly through this time lapse in here because this interchange was quite uh, normal, I guess. At, uh, at first I wanted to build it a bit more interesting, but uh, then I really wanted to just build some really, really simple interchange uh, because I was not exactly sure, and I'm still not sure, how places or buildings, districts, uh, you know, building blocks are going to look like on the side of this interchange. That's kind of one thing about uh, this particular one that uh, we're going to see today. I'm just doing it uh, very, very simply, not really doing a lot of detailing around it. And in the cinematics, you will also see some things that are just uh, flat out not done at all, so that I can have some more you know, breathing space uh, for some later time when I'm just going to be expanding the city into this area. One particular building that I was absolutely sure of that I wanted to have it here was this uh, office building that has like the rounded side. I always wanted to put that building somewhere and it was quite clear that we need to put it so that there's going to be some kind of a road on that uh, rounded side of the building. And this place in particular was absolutely perfect for it because I'm doing those like a teardrop uh, shapes, like a little diverging places just where the main avenue like splits into those uh, into those uh, highway ramps. It's something that I had to do because of uh, how distortions appeared on those intersections. And one of those te teardrop shapes just looked absolutely perfect for this uh, for this office building. So that's exactly why I placed it there, even though it doesn't really, uh, you know, fit in uh, the rest of the area just yet. But when I'm going to get into this place again, sometime in the future, probably not in uh, like near future, but very distant future, when I'm going to get into this space, into this area, I'm definitely going to build around what I've already built here with that, with that office building. So we are just going to have like a, like a base for, for that entire, you know, place. Kind of similar thing I did for the opposite side of this interchange. I definitely had uh, an idea for some kind of a, like a triangle building there, and I don't really have that many triangle buildings. This one is probably the only one, I guess, and it looked perfect in that place because, again, we have those ramps. They are kind of forming like a triangle place, so 
putting a triangle building just makes uh, sense. It's quite logical to put it there. I had to use it as a procedural object though because it, cause it was kind of quite tall and I really wanted to have it a bit shorter, not larger than the buildings, you know, in the in the area, in the surrounding area, because we are not really in the downtown anymore. So I don't really want to put uh, the tallest buildings in the city, you know, not in the downtown in here. So that's why I had to use procedural objects and make it a bit shorter. And we are almost done with this interchange, actually. I was just doing, like I said, very, very light detailing uh, together with uh, some like uh, like glass walls on this on this bridge and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much done. And we are definitely going to go back to that interchange in the cinematics, but right now we are moving for that uh, second interchange. And this one, like I said before, is going to be a bit more interesting. I don't know if uh, there is any kind of design like this in real life, so I have no idea how it would be called in real life. But uh, I just wanted to create it maybe so that it would look like an infinity symbol, just, just a bit like an infinity symbol, right? Or the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the mark, whatever it's called. So... I wanted to create like two loops on both sides of uh, of the of the highway, and uh, have them connected somewhat, uh, somewhat you know, in an interesting fashion, I guess. But uh, definitely, it's not going to be like a super. At first, I wanted to have it like a very simplified interchange, like for example, have even some intersecting points where traffic would have to give the right of way, which is obviously going to lower capacity. But this particular interchange is not really in an area where I will need like a super high capacity. So I really wanted to maybe try something a bit more, you know, interesting and uh, wanted to just create it so that it uh, looks like uh, something I haven't built yet, right? Because I've built quite a lot of interchanges in, in my career as a City Skylines player. So just wanted to build something, something slightly different. But uh, in the end, it actually it turned out to be uh, like a complete interchange, like a you know, 100% interchange without any intersecting points where traffic would have to give the right of way so that, uh, you know, every way has its own ramp, I guess. Now, I'm not showing it in the time lapses in here, but I was first uh, trying to build all the interchanges, both of these, uh, with uh, the vanilla highways. But uh, at first, it was kind of looking all right, especially for the first interchange, because I had a lot of space for that one. And uh, the vanilla highways are definitely wider, especially the, the, the one lane ramps. They are much wider than these. And it was looking fine. But uh, for the second interchange in particular, it was not looking good at all, because I had to do a lot of uh, those uh, little loops in that uh, first loop that we have already in this in this time lapse, we can see it on the screen. But uh, it would be completely impossible to do it with the vanilla highways. As you can see, I'm putting the fourth um, fourth uh, road in here, fourth uh, loop, partial loop, I guess, in this area. And if I did it with uh, the just the vanilla roads, it would probably be like twice or maybe three times as wide. So I had to uh, I had to go for for these roads, and it was definitely a good decision because these roads for highway interchanges look absolutely amazing. They look really, really good. And especially with the one one lane roads, you can you can really do a lot of nice designs. You can really really do a lot of uh, a lot of magic in, with these with these particular roads because uh, you can really do a lot of different connections. Obviously, going up and down and having all kinds of uh, curved road loops, and they all look really 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 neat, right? So these roads absolutely 100% recommend that you get them. I think these are called the Shuto Expressways. I'm not exactly sure about that. There's uh, there's uh, multiple expressways packs in the workshop, so I'm not sure if these if this is the the one, but it probably is. It probably is. So, like I said, if you want to have a good looking highways, definitely use these because they look absolutely amazing. Right. So going to the opposite side of uh, of the highway and doing the second loop, most of the connections for this interchange are actually part of the first loop, uh, you know, the one that we have been building uh, before this one. So the second loop, this one, is actually going to be just one road, one loop, right? And uh, there's just going to be this uh, opposite uh, going road around it, like a quarter circle or something. But uh, the loop itself is going to be just one road, which is going to put, uh, which is going to create a very asymmetrical interchange, because most interchange designs you have, you have seen in real life, are symmetrical, right? You, you can obviously look at, I don't know, the prime example of this is probably the clover leaf interchange, the full clover leaf interchange, which is obviously uh, symmetrical around, you know, two axes, I guess is the word. But uh, this interchange in here, not symmetrical at all. So 
that creates it that creates a really interesting impression and uh, it's just something that i really want to do in this particular area because there's going to be buildings different in uh, on, on both sides of the interchange so it kind of makes sense that the interchange itself is uh, is going to be asymmetrical as well and obviously it just adds to the overall like variety of the entire area so that's obviously nice now the drawback of creating like a custom interchange that's asymmetrical and you know non-standard design is obviously that it takes you a long time to build one and design one obviously and you know, troubleshoot it make sure that every connection is there every you know direction is present so that cars can use it to go wherever they want to go right all right so the interchange is almost done in here i was just doing some very very simple like a uh, last connections in this area and uh, i wanted to do for this video i wanted to create something some kind of structure some buildings around this inter interchange so that's exactly what i did and i did it for this interchange not the first one the first one is going to stay like we like we already seen and it's going to stay like that for quite some time but this particular interchange and especially this area where we are having that uh, tram tracks uh, extension into this place this used to be like a like a end station loop but uh, I had to move it over the highway just a slightly and we're gonna have a different station over here now if you remember uh, this area was featured uh, how many episodes ago two episodes ago I mean you know three episodes ago technically so uh, we have been we have we have seen how I created that uh, well using these uh, sheds concrete roofs I suppose uh, created like a half roof over that main avenue building and in this particular side of it we have done that uh, tram station again tram stations in Aurelia it's kind of how it how it always is but uh, this particular one we have seen in the cinematics I was kind of uh, saying that I was a bit proud of it and this particular place is just going to extend it right so I wanted to create I don't really want to spoil any ideas for the future episodes so I'm just going to uh, say that I really wanted to create like a little island in here which is going to have this uh, again the concrete uh, shed and uh, the walk path the pedestrian walk path as some sort of a like a base for it and then it's obviously going to be a bit smaller on the top and on you know on the very top of this entire place I really wanted to put some kind of a unique building and that's exactly what I did with that I think it's an office building actually and not really a unique building or might be wrong there but uh, you know the spire looking building the tower the nice looking building on the top here I had to use a procedural object for it because it's kind of small um, in a, the original you know in the original configuration so I had to make it a tiny bit bigger I really wanted to have it taller than the surrounding buildings because I really want to have it as uh, like a main uh, highlight of this place like I said kind of like a like a little island maybe like a little beacon island uh, on the side of the highway it doesn't really make sense right but uh, uh, I don't know from architectural point of view it might be looking uh, quite all right maybe maybe it could be considered some as some kind of an interesting architectural you know feature of this place whatever and obviously so it's not completely alone I had to I had to put some some more buildings in here by the way this is the first time that I discovered uh, these are vanilla buildings by the way if you haven't know uh, if you haven't noticed that these are vanilla buildings from the green cities DLC all the all the green cities and IT whatever buildings as well so these are looking actually really good and this is the first time that I've seen these and I've used them because they look really really great at first I thought they are from the workshop just some modded road uh, modded buildings but they look good they look really 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 good so I put a few of them again procedural objects because I don't have any roads any car connections uh, to the top of that uh, little island area in here so it's only a pedestrian area no car connection whatsoever I didn't didn't really want to uh, make any car connection as well because I don't really have a very very narrow uh, tram and car road I would have to probably make one download one don't really want to one last thing guys you probably noticed but this channel has reached a whopping 10,000 subscriber milestone a few days ago thank you so much it's really crazy to think that 10,000 of you clicked that big red button I really appreciate all your support I'm really glad that you like these videos enough to spend some time with them every week and again I thank you 
I don't have any particular plans for the future of this channel. I will just keep on keeping on, I guess. Aurelia is definitely going to last us for a really long time. We still have the Industries Vanilla series, some different videos from cities here and there. Right now I have some interchange tutorial ready to be made as soon as I can. And of course, looking out for some other games to play too, probably after the Industries series. When it comes to the number of videos a week, I think the standard three, with maybe an occasional fourth bonus video here and there, is probably going to stay. Definitely can't do more in the long run, as I just don't have the time. And I really don't want to do fewer than three, because I want to keep the channel reasonably going. There's also the Christmas holidays coming up. I still need to buy a lot of presents, but whatever. But what could interest you the most is that I will probably have some completely free evenings. So maybe a live stream, maybe, maybe. We will see. I'll keep you posted definitely on Twitter. Guys, that is all for today. Hope you liked today's video. If you did, leave a like, comment, share. Subscribe if you're new here. Follow me on Twitter and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you again. Take care and goodbye.